If you've been on the photography side of TikTok or Instagram recently, you've probably seen people talking about mist or diffusion filters. The general purpose of these filters is to create a softer image and create a smoother transition between the highlights and the shadows of the image called a bloom effect. And that's all cool and fine if that's the aesthetic you wanna go for with your photos, but these filters cost around $90 and only go up from there. So today I'm gonna to show you how you can achieve the same effect as these filters for free in editing with Lightroom. Oh, and if you learned something today, consider hitting that like button and subscribe button if you wanna see more stuff like this. All right, let's jump into it. Now I'm going for a sort of warm, dreamy, romantic vibe for the shoot. So I'm actually gonna start just by correcting the exposure a little bit so I can see what I'm doing and then warming up the photo way too much. So I'm gonna make this overly warm and then bring down the vibrance just a little bit to kind of correct for it so the skin tones don't get like messed up. So now I'm just gonna make some basic adjustments, add a little bit of contrast, bring up the shadows to get some details back in the shadows because I'm shooting right in the sun, it's a backlit image. I like to underexpose so that I get a little bit of details out of the highlights and then I can bring up the shadows in editing like I just did and that way I get a little bit of everything. And then we're gonna bring down the highlights a little bit but not too much because I want it to have sort of this bright dreamy look to it. And and I only like to adjust the whites and blacks to get a white point and black point in this image. So I already have a white point, as we can see the histogram is touching the right side of the graph, so I don't need to adjust the whites. I'm just gonna bring down the blacks a little bit until I see the light up on the corner. And now the left side of the histogram is touching there, so this is the perfect amount of contrast for me. And we'll just add like a touch of clarity, just a tiny bit, cause you don't wanna go overboard with this. Gonna bring just a touch of contrast back with my tone curve here, but not too much. Now I'm gonna tweak my HSL a bit, just so that the greens are exactly how I want them and also these skin tones are exactly how I want them. Now, because of how much we warmed up this image, a lot of the greenery in here is actually gonna fall into the yellow slider because it's so warm. It's more yellow than green now. So I'm gonna drag this just a little bit more towards the green color to kind of counteract how much we warmed up this photo. And then we're gonna bring the greens a little bit closer to the yellow. Now looking at the skin tones here, they look pretty good. I think I'm going to make them just a tiny bit closer to the yellow side and orange. Then I'm gonna bring down the yellow and green sliders to really desaturate the greenery because the focus of the image is not the stuff around them, it's them right in the middle. And it's kind of an environmental portrait. So they're a little bit smaller in the image, which is fine. It just means that I need to use some other elements to sort of draw your eye right into the center. Those elements while I'm shooting are mainly the composition of the image, but now in editing, I have to sort of reinforce that. And I'm just gonna bring up the luminance of the orange a little bit. This will bring up the skin tones just a bit more. And I'm gonna desaturate some of these colors that don't really show up in the image because sometimes there can be a little bit of purpley in the tree bark, and then there can be some blue in the whites of the shirt and I don't want any of that coming through, so I'm just gonna desaturate that even if it's just a little bit in the image. I don't really wanna to touch the color grading panel for this. I might just try and see if adding a little bit of warmth to the highlights helps it out, but if it doesn't, I might keep a little bit in there, but that's it, I'm not gonna to touch that anymore. Then we're gonna skip all the way down to calibration and I'm just gonna play around with the blue primary here under calibration and see if that adds anything. I like just a tiny tweak to the left here just to add a little bit of warmth in there. I know we already have a lot of warmth, but it's just kind of what I'm going for. Now, because of how warm we've made this and sort of the environment that I was already shooting in, it already kind of has a dreamy look to it, which is nice. But now I'm gonna show you how to add this diffusion look. We're gonna go up to our masking button here and we're gonna add a radial gradient. Now we're gonna do two of these and this is going to get our dreamy effect. The first one is gonna be right on them here in the middle. Not too big because you don't want the feather to spill over top and see the adjustment outside of where they are. And all we're gonna do for this one is just drag up the exposure just a little bit. Naturally, when you're looking at an image, your eye is drawn to what's the brightest in the image. And these two are basically the same brightness as all of this greenery around them, and I don't want them to get lost in it. So we're gonna brighten them up a little bit so your eye is kind of naturally drawn into the middle. Then we're gonna create a new mask, add another radial gradient, and we're gonna do it in the same spot right over top of them, but we're gonna make this one a little bit bigger. Because now we're gonna check this invert checkbox right here, just like that. So now we're affecting everything but the couple. And all we're gonna do is is drag our clarity slider down to about negative 50. You can do whatever feels right. I'm gonna go maybe negative 60. I like how that looks. And then with that applied, I'm gonna drag this in just a little smaller just a little closer to them. And look at that, that just instantly blooms these highlights. It makes everything nice and soft around the couple. So we just really easily added this dreamy effect to this photo, especially in those highlights. Now, the reason we do this on a radial mask instead of just adjusting the clarity of the whole image is we don't wanna take out detail from the couple. Also, when we slightly blur everything around the subject, but not the subject itself, it's another way of drawing the eyes right into the center, right where we want people to look. And doing this adjustment with a clarity filter over something like Gaussian blur, is much more realistic because clarity is not just blurring stuff. Think of clarity kind of like smart contrast that applies to the edges of things in your image. So when you increase your clarity, you're really just increasing the contrast of the edges of things. And when we decrease our clarity, we're doing the opposite and taking away some of that contrast. So it's not just a normal blur effect and I think that's why this works so well. And there you go, here's what we started with and here is what we ended up with. 
Such a dramatic difference. I think this looks so good. And it was free. All you needed was a little bit of editing skills. All right, that is it for this video. If you learned something, smash that like button. Consider hitting subscribe if you want to see more stuff like this. Let me know in the comments. What kind of tutorials do you guys want to see? And of course, links to my TikTok, Instagram, and my kit, my gear that I use on a regular basis is all linked in the description. So check that out as well. Thank you guys for watching. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.